is applying a bandage uh, to the wound. So first of all, you want to unroll the bandage, making sure that the sterile pad isn't touched at all. This this is so that it doesn't disinfect, and then eventually, um, obviously, put an infection into the wound itself. You want to unroll the bandage. We then want to apply the bandage to the wounded area as such and ask the casualty whether or not they could apply pressure onto it for me. With the short side you want to leave it hanging um, and with the long side you want to fully, make sure it's fully unrolled. Whilst the um, casualty is applying pressure, not only does it keep the bandage uh, in place but it also um, obviously stops the bleeding from going through the bandage itself. So first of all, we want to wrap the bandage around the whole side of, uh, of the sterile pad. This is just so it's uh, tighter and covers all the areas. You want to make sure that the bandage doesn't tangle or knot up. Um, this is so, it, otherwise it will affect the overall effectiveness of the bandage um, and could uh, cause worse to the injury. As the bandage is wrapped around, we would then want to get the shorter piece and wrap it around the end piece that isn't yet uh, covered. Um, and underneath, when, when coming back round, you want to make sure that it is knotted. As such, making sure it's tight. So, uh, once completing the bandage, um, it's, it's also key to assess, assess the wound. Um, if the blood is still pouring through the bandage and seeks through, um, you can apply another bandage over the top. Uh, but if the blood is still uh, profusely uh, coming out, um, then obviously you will have to take it off and restart. Um, another way is to also elevate the hand. Uh, this is so the blood flow doesn't go up and it causes um, a, less, a lesser streak of blood flow.